there, welcome to another Team Blue List tournament report. We're off today to go to 40k in Colchester again, a uh, place where we usually go for tournaments. So there is me obviously, Nick who is kindly Hello. driving me there. We are playing a team tournament today, so it's two people on the team and, and what's, what's this? There's nobody in the back of the car, we've been let down. We are the only Team Clueless members going Wait, today. Are you saying I left my child at home? Oh, oh, I'm sure Amanda will look after her. <laughs> so, there is only the pair of us going to represent Team Blue List today, so we're going to have to do doubly well to make the team proud. Uh, as I said, it's a doubles tournament, it's a uh, 1,000 points a player, so 2,000 points a side, and it's a standard three round tournament using missions from the book. Uh, we are bringing a combined Space Marine Tau Force today. I'm not sure really where to point the camera at this point, so we'll point it at the road and you can see the lovely countryside while I tell you what's in our list. So, we are bringing uh, Space Marines, and in there we have a captain on bike. He's got Artificer Armor and a Relic Blade. Uh, we've got five scouts as half of our troops. They've got no upgrades at all. They've just got sniper rifles, so the barest minimum points I can spend possible. Uh, then we've got a group of five bikes. They've got double melter gun, attack bike with multi-melter, and some melter bombs. Um, then we're moving to elites. We've got five terminators with a cyclone missile launcher. Uh, fast attack, we have the Stormtown gunship with Skyhammer missiles. Heavy support, we have the Thunderfire cannon because it's really far too good not to take. And I'm taking an Aegis defence line with quad gun for my Tau allies to sit behind. Now, as Nick's driving, I'll read out his Tau for him and he can comment what he thinks on them. So, to start with, we have an Ethereal, Nick. How do you like your new Ethereal? Uh, much better than the, um, obviously, were in the previous edition. Um, if people saw our game last week that we posted up, he did very, very well. And he's uh, very useful for 50 points. That's it. He no longer kills your army, does he? No. Uh, then in our other Tau HQ slot, we have, now this may take some time to go through, a Commander. He's got a Flamer. He's got Vectored Retro Thrusters. He has a Stimulant Injector. He has a Neuroweb System Jammer. He has an Onager Gauntlet. He has a Commander Control Node. He has a Pure Tide Engram Chip. He has a Multi-Spectrum Sensor Suite. And he has an Iridium Battle Suit. So basically he has all the war gear you're allowed to take in the Tau book. Uh, what he does on the table, he basically improves any unit he joins. So if he joins a unit, he gives them re-rolls to hit and ignores cover with all their shooting attacks. Um, and he also has a 2 plus save and feel no pain, meaning that he can really tank shots at the front of the unit because he's also going to stop this 5. He's got a strength 10 AP1 melee attack. He gives the unit hit and run, uh, but most importantly, he gives the unit a selection of other rules each turn, but generally he gives them either tank hunter or monster hunter. So going with a riptide or going with the um, broadsides we'll get to, he just enables them to kill any target they fire at, so he's just, just awesome. But he does cost a large amount of points. Then we have some fire warriors in troops. We've got two standard squads of 12. And we have 19 crew carnivores with sniper rifles and one crew hound. Now, Nick used to hate crew, didn't you, Nick? You utterly despised them in the previous I, edition. I did indeed. But um, how are you liking the new sniper crew? Um, I'm enjoying um, they're, they're growing on me. <laughs> um, obviously, I, need, I used, again, used them last week. They did well. They were um, a nice line of defence to go in front of, like, fire warriors and stuff. And the sniper shots with the red din and that is useful for taking down... Uh, or what we uh, bigger things, obviously. Yeah, things like other riptides, wraith yeah. knights, stuff like that. That's the main reason we got them. Yeah, and they are a cheap upgrade. I think with the Aegis defence line now, to give them some defence, mm. they're good for a back line, not for, for sitting back, I think, now. That they are. And then Nick has been frantically painting away. Um, he mistakenly let me design the army for today, so... And this was no fault of my own, but I designed my army, the Space Marines, and didn't need to paint any models. And then I designed Nick's Tau army for him, because he hadn't really had a chance to read the book at the time. And he had to make loads of models. But he has valiantly done so, much to his wife's disdain. But he has now finished painting his Riptide, so we have a Riptide in the army. He has Twin Link Fusion Blasters, Ion Accelerator, an Ernie Warning Override, and a Velocity Tractor, or Tracker if you prefer. I prefer Tractor myself. Um, so he's there for basically adding a bit of sky fire and intercept, allowing us to take out stuff that tries to come and get on our backfield early in the game. Uh, then we also have, last thing in the army, two broadside battle suits. They've got the twin linked high yield missile pods just because they put out so much fire. And they have early warning overrides, again, to stop people outflanking us, drop podding in, that type of thing. 
and there are four missile drones in that unit as well, just to add to the plethora of Strep 7 shooting they're going to put out. So the basic idea of the army is that we've obviously got a kind of like fire base that's going to consist of the fire warriors and the ethereal and generally the broadside behind them. They can support each other with their supporting fire. Um, the terminators, um, who also have a bit of long range fire, are basically screening in front of that unit, intercepting close combat units that come for them. And because they're allied codexes and they're best of friends, I can't remember the exact word that's used, uh, the yeah, Tau can use their... Promise, that's the one. The Tau can use their supporting fire to protect them. Uh, we've got the bikes that can go forwards because they're troop choices because of the captain to claim objectives. Uh, the Thunder Fire Cannon, the, uh, the what's it called? The uh, Storm Talon gunship uh, both add long range fire to the army um, and can also uh, like put suppression on things. They're just good against most targets along with the broadsides. And then the Riptide is a move forward contest um, unit for later in the game. Um, the Crute, if we're needing to get objectives, are excellent at outflanking because they've got the Crute Hound. And the commander basically goes where he wants. If we're fighting monstrous creatures, he can join the crew and give their sniping shots, re-rolls to hit, re-rolls to wound. So they're likely to kill more or less any monstrous creature with a round of fire. Um, or he can join the Riptide to help ignore cover with his strength um, a AP2 large blast, which deals with Terminators and such really well. Or it can join the broadsides and means they ignore cover if we're fighting wave serpents and such. So he's just a, a real toolbox commander who can go wherever he wants, and he's also reasonably good in close combat. Um, he gives the Terminators hit and run on initiative four, so that's quite useful. So just all around, he goes wherever needs to be fixed. So he's going to be our army necessarily has to set up in kind of like a bubble effect just so he can join all the different units he needs to. Well it's kind of we want to set up in the bubble isn't it with the um, having luck because we've got the 30 inch range yeah, so that's any, it. anything that comes into our into our range. As, uh, we discovered, good luck to them. <laughs> as we discovered last week when we played um, Hammer and Anvil much as everyone assumed the tower are really shooty for, so they don't actually have the range they used to have, do they? Because the broadsides no. are not that long range with their missile pods. No, with the with the high yield missiles, which um, which I I think I actually prefer them now to the uh, bigger guns, actually. Yeah, now the, the guns have gone into strength eight. They're not quite as impressive yeah. as strength ten versions. Um, yeah, so you only got like the well with them it's a thirty six inch range. So having the the really long table edges isn't isn't that, that useful, especially as we saw. Uh, if you've got enough terrain, your opponent can just hide from you until they run right on top of you and uh, if they have too many units on top of you, you can't deal with them all at once. Yeah, I'm really glad we played that game last week. I felt we both learnt a lot last week, didn't we? Yeah. Because neither of us are particularly skilled at using New Tower because we just haven't played them at all. Yeah, and it's a good job too because we've now designed a new cheat sheet for this week. Yes, because last week we forgot so many of our rules. We kept on forgetting the Ethereal's rules. We didn't do the timing of the chip commander's chips very well, so I, I wrote out a big cheat sheet so today hopefully we won't annoy our opponents quite so badly by having to keep on asking to go back to do stuff. I mean the tournament we're going to is a really friendly tournament and I've no doubt that more or less everyone down there would let us go back and remember to do things, but it's always best if you don't do that, isn't it? So we have a nice cheat sheet. I'm feeling slightly worse for wear today as I was out obviously, and Nick's child was up at two in the morning this morning with him, so he's not feeling that awake either. So we're going to really rely on that cheat sheet, I feel. <laughs> but so, still, who needs sleep to win a tournament? Yeah, that's it. So today we're going to do our standard reporting back after every round. Um, and also, hopefully, I might cut this bit out of the video if we don't actually do it. But I'll try and take a picture of the table before each round, just so we can then describe what we were doing on the table. As there's only two of us, it'll add a little extra to put into the video. So, wish us luck. Okay, so this is our first table. We're just in the middle of the first turn. Not going to do turn by turn, just to show you the battlefield we're playing on. So it's a beating baron. We've, we've set up down here. It's kind of like a castle formation as always with our defence line. And we're playing against an Eldar Tau force. So we've set up over there. So look, they've got one, two Wraith Knights and a Riptide. Not going to be good for us. Our bikes are about to bite it due to this Riptide, I suspect. We'll report after the game. Okay, so we finished our first game. We were playing Crusade, were we? It was playing Crusade, yes. There was uh, Crusade, five... and it was long table edges and five objectives. Yeah, Dawn of War deployment. Dawn of War, that's it. Let's try and get your head in the shot. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, so we're playing that, and we're playing Luke and Hamish. We had a great game. So just go for a really brief what kind of happened in the game, Nick. Um, both of us had a brilliant first turn, really. I mean, we both uh, shot, and after that, it was kind of like, which way was it going to go? But uh, race guards basically coming in, and we did what we did like before. We turned and just hmm. hunkered down and bolstered Yeah, we tried to move forward with our bikes, but yeah. even though our bikes had loads of good saves in there, we rolled, well, I rolled shockingly, and they killed all our bikes in one shooting phase. Yeah, so we only about two yeah. units. Yeah, well, that was basically after turn one, so it was yeah. kind of... But we had a really good first turn, we pie-plated yeah. their broadsides yeah, of our Riptide broadside. and killed them both. Um, and they were making... We brought the crew on out flanking, uh, second turn went in for far side, come on, far side. Um, not come on, far side, uh, far side and that. Yeah, we tried to kill them, didn't we? God, it took yeah. so many shots. It did, but they, the, the amount of saves and lookout serves that mm. being made... Yeah. We, we got a rule slightly wrong at the tournament. Apparently you're allowed to only take one troop in each of your two sections, yeah. so they only bought two troops, so Nick and I decided about turn three when they'd they'd taken a fair toll on our army hadn't they they'd, yeah. they'd killed all our offensive units so we then decided we'll we'll ignore their stuff other than, other than troops and we just killed both their troop choices then we knew that we couldn't really lose yeah and we still had our troop choice we still had yeah. three troop choices the troop were running away but we was hoping for them to run back so yeah we, uh, we were running out of time slightly then because it was a really good natured game and we were we were chatting as we were going. It got to turn five and we were running out of time slightly, so we, we had to try and run for objectives. And at the end, we had four units, three units on objectives, but yeah. they still had quite a lot of firepower. And, and took, one Wraith Knight took out one squad on objective, and then the other Wraith Knight took out the closest models on the yeah. other, and then their Hammerhead took out the closest models on another. So we had three yeah. troop troopers left, but none of them actually in range of score. It was a bit of an no, issue. They, they were only just, so they took out the couple which they needed. It was their, it was their pie plates, wasn't it? We had to yeah. spread out so much so we couldn't get close enough to the objectives. Yeah. But in the end, what was the scores in the end? Uh, we it scored... Was two, it was 2-0 in the end. We scored uh, Warlord and the... Um, yeah, we killed their Ethereal, Ethereal and their yeah. Eldrad was Warlord, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And they got Mindbreaker and First Blood. Yeah, trying to kill two yeah. Dreadknights that come into your end zone is pretty difficult. Yeah, well, it's the Riptide as well. Yeah, the Riptide was there. there. Uh, so I think if the game had gone on much longer, they still had tougher units left because we were having to yeah. make bad moves to get near objectives we were yeah. losing think, stuff yeah, I think another, another turn uh, if, if we went on for a turn six I think they may have taken it but I'm um, yeah because if, if they kill our choices. ethereal, they get a point. Yeah, that's what that's what they. Or two points. That's, that's what, what they were trying to do. Yeah, that was what their last shot did. Because obviously they um, well, attempted to. So they mm. got rid of troop choice, and they still had like one pike left. So they tried yeah. it. Tried it, but. But overall, it was a really good game. We got on really well with our opponents, and it was awesome. And you can see, obviously, yeah. the tables up here look awesome as well. Too many awesomes there. Sentence. But you see, they've got yeah. these nicer shrubbery bushes yeah, here and, and the nice trees. Rooms and, stuff, and so. I mean, we'll be playing lots of the other tables. All of their tables look really different down at this place so yeah. you've got a nice ice board there a nice sand board over there but we'll do those in more detail when we get to them let's see how we do in our second match okay so this is our round two we've got to do it on first turn so we just had our second turn see the lovely board we're playing on uh, we've been quite lucky so far we've got loads of scatter fields in our objectives what mission are we playing um, scouring we're playing the Thank scouring you. we're playing these two pleasant gentlemen over here uh, they're playing imperial guard and they are playing dark angels um, and we're playing the scouring and it's hammer and anvil and we've we've been quite lucky so far I think, yeah we, i mean yeah hammer and anvil uh not normally our best setup with it with this army because mm. of arranging that but we were very lucky with the um mystery the objective points because we've got the majority here so they've got to come to us yeah uh, we've got a four a three and a two so they've got a three a yeah. two and a one so we're advantage and we're turned two in and we've killed their warlord and got first blood first, we? yeah that was on, that so, on our first turn which was very lucky so very useful look we're really um, struggling to kill vendettas at yeah. the minute aren't we um the bad things that we had obviously we will go through more than that, but the broadsides again have suffered. The broadsides again suffered a uh, bad um, yeah. ga game, and they've actually gone. There's just a couple of broadsides are gone, games. and all my terminators scattered off the board and mishapped and all dead. Yeah, so <laughs> they're doing really bad second only go, but we'll do a summary at the end. Yeah. Okay, so you join Nick and I at the end of our second game, and nice successful game now, wasn't it, Nick? It was. It was a uh, good win for us, actually. Uh, yeah, how was the score? I think the score was 14-3 at the end. It was 11-3 in the end. But I remember our secondaries as well. Yeah, that was... Uh, oh, no, sorry. Uh, yes, it was 14 in total. So, 14 3s so that was good. I mean, it was quite close. Most of the game, we were both holding all our objectives, because, yeah. as often happens in the scouring, we had three back here, and they had three back there. Yeah. So, what did our Fire Warriors do this game? Nick, were they awesome? No. <laughs> they, well, they, they were, in in fact, they did what they're supposed to do. They sat behind the defence. They line, sat here and here. And, uh, one was already on an objective with the quad gun, and yep. the other one's last turn just ran into the building to score the other objective, which we put in 
short distance. Yeah, I think, just I think the main point of this game was, I may have said on the previous little bit of video, but we've bolstered this ruin here, so that gave us a 3 plus cover save. Yeah. We got a scatter field from the mysterious objective in there, which gave us a 3 plus cover save. Yeah. And we had our Aegis defence line here with a scatter field behind it, giving us a 3 plus cover save. So our entire army was covered by 3 plus yeah. cover saves, which was a real hindrance to our opponent. And our, our Thunderfire and the Riptide just shot oh, yeah. everything, didn't oh, yeah. they? Um, it was very lucky. I mean, the Riptide survived with just one wound left in the end. A couple of wounds were caused by failed Nova charges, I will say. But, um, and the Thunderfire only survived because they were rolling appallingly with their last Yeah, cannons. I mean, <laughs> managed to make the last save. The Thunderfire um, took them off their last one of their objectives. Actually, oh, every the turn, turn we just annihilated stuff, yeah. didn't we? It was brilliant. It, it was basically, it ended up, we, we left them on one, one objective in the end, mm. just because we failed the charge. Our general plan was we had our fire base back here and we had infiltrated our crew who came on the side yeah. and took they the corner here. objective. And, and the bikes had come up here as well. Oh, the well. bikes were really good this game. The bikes previous yeah. game just died when they moved forward. They're, the idea of the bikes is to distract the enemy. They move forward, absorb a lot of shots, and then hopefully assault and kill something. Which they did do, because they, they, were, did, they yeah. were very worried about it. What did they kill this game? They killed the librarian of the opponents. Uh, they yeah. killed his tactical squad. They killed, they killed, they killed, they killed the demolisher. a Limrush demolisher, a land raider. And they did a lot of damage to the tactical squad. Yeah, and they here. did three wounds to another tactical squad. So they yeah. were awesome this game. And they did. Nick and I, have, our army isn't good versus AV14. We've only really got the Riptide that can hurt them at range. Yeah. But our bike squad has got all the melter we can put in it, and they just rode up the side and killed two big tanks. They were really good. The yeah. Terminators, on the other hand, hmm, we we decided to go right in the middle of their back it lines. Was basically back about there. there and scattered 10 inches backwards off the board. I rolled a one, my fault. They were removed from the game. Um, which wasn't as bad though because their, their Terminators, they tried to bring them right down behind Yeah, they tried line, to deep strike over here. Really about there. Um, they mishapped and we got to place them, so we put them right, right in the, the corner. That was, that was a large amount of their points. That was seven Deathwing Terminators. So Yeah, they got the final the Cyclone missile generally, but that was it. It was only yeah, until so the last turn. There was a lot of points of theirs so, out yeah. of the game. But um, overall, again, two really um, nice we, opponents to play yeah, against. We was lucky with the Flyers as well, actually, because our our one didn't come in, yeah. basically. But Never. they had their two vendettas come in, but they were unlucky with, with their was, shots. Basically. It was our cover again, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we, we just couldn't we couldn't destroy them. The, the riptide mm. it was supposed to did a couple of. It took two turns, three. Once turns. they got within range of the fusion blast, oh, then yeah, it just moved yeah. forward and kills. Yeah. But again, the the tower commander. I mean, he's a lot of points, but the fact he was making the riptide's massive pipe like, ignore cover, we just choose the unit, yeah. fire at it, and kill it. It was brilliant. Well, it was. I mean, last turn we fit. We, the Thunder Five finished off the unit over there, which holding objectives. So there's just the scouts over there. Yeah. Uh, which the crew were going to go in anyway. In games like this, but, those um, two units really are just yeah. Killer. The, the riptide just wiped them out to one person left, and then the crew went in and finished them off. So we are one win and one draw at this point, and we've got one round left to go. Let's hope for another win, shall we, Nick? Yeah, let's hope for that. Everyone wish us luck. Okay, so it's our game three. We are playing the Vanguard Strike and uh, the Relic, our least favourite mission type of all time. Uh, we've set up over here with all our stuff. You can see we're playing against an Imperial Guard unit, which has got two Blob Squads and two Vendettas, basically, that's all they have. And a Screamer Council, which has got uh, three Heralds in it, and they've got Fate Weaver. And we're playing for the Relic, which isn't good. Uh, so we'll report at the end of the game how we got on. Okay, so as you see, you've got a lovely picture of a road to stare at again, so you can tell we're on our way home. So we played our third round, and we were playing against a Demon and Imperial Guard pairing. They were playing, the Demons had Fate Weaver, three Nurglings, and a massive Screamer Council with three Heralds in, with all the standard upgrades and such. Um, and the Imperial Guards were two big Blob Squads? It was two big Blob Squads, yeah. I think one was slightly bigger than the other, but they were Blob Squads, and then they basically had lots of heavy weapons. There were two mortar heavy weapon teams, uh, and then various LAS cannons, yeah. auto cannons and scattered uh, around. Two Vendettas as well. Oh yeah, two Vendettas, and a Company Command Squad and such. Uh, Fate Weaver was their general for the re-rolls. Um, so we were playing the Relic in that game, and I'm not a big fan of the Relic anyway, so we rolled, the most important roll was to see who could go first, the fact that if we went first, we could kill their Screamer Council before they got all their psychic powers off. Uh, but unfortunately, we failed to go first, didn't we, Nick? Oh, we did. So we failed in the uh, still to steal the initiative. And yeah, well, our second chance, we failed that as well, so they went first. But on the first turn, they did fail their Grimoire check, even with Fate Weaver's re-roll. So we actually did a reasonable amount of damage to the Screamers. We killed four Screamers. We, we killed half the Screamers in, in that turn. Um, unfortunately, the Riptide uh, missed. Yeah, he was doing his Strength Fate pie plate and would have hit loads, but he scattered a lot. So we didn't get anything on him. Um, and after that, they just went for their 2-plus save. And we'd put so much fire into them turn one, seeing it as our only opportunity. 
um, that we hadn't killed much of the rest of their army and they just responded with fire and they were just wiping stuff out with their las cannons, auto cannons. Yeah, well, things. We, we thought, because obviously without having the Grim Knight, I thought if we can get rid of the Screamer Council or whittle them down so there was nothing then, mm. obviously, it's just turned, it would then be decided now we need pie plates we can get into the That's it. Guard. We, if the, we did actually, we took the relic on turn one using the trick where you can move your bikers up 12 inches, we started them on the 12 inch line, we moved them up 12 inches to claim the relic and then they can turbo boost 6 inches backwards and then we formed the, all the models without the relic behind the one, uh, sorry, in front of the one who had the relic to protect him and we did that for two free turns we held yeah, the objective well, for. Yeah, because obviously we did the old, uh, we dropped the relic and uh, re forced ourselves to retreat because obviously we lost a couple yeah, of Yeah, we were using combat tactics, I'm going to miss that when it's gone, uh, but the problem was we used our terminators to try and hold up the screamers and the Screamers killed five Terminators in one round of combat. I was rolling atrociously on my saves. It, it wasn't very clever. And then after that, the game was pretty much over, wasn't it? They would, the Screamers well, just washed through us, and yeah. the 19 Imperial Guardsmen, or however many there were, were just shooting us off the table. I mean, it was still a fun match, though. I mean, both us and our opponents were having a... Because the game wasn't being that competitive, because our, after the first turn or so, we all knew what the result was going to be, but we were there to play a game, and we had good fun. There was... One bit where, what was it, it was three stands of Nurglings? Three, three Nurglings, so that's 45 points I believe it was. Um, they, took... they charged our 20 crew and killed all of them to a man in one round. Yep. <laughs> Obviously yeah. they swept us and such, but it was hilarious. Everyone around was laughing, it was brilliant. It was top fun. Uh, we tried to hurt Fate Weaver, didn't we? But we failed to get any wounds, and that was our our private goal. We'd come up with was yep. to try and kill Fate Weaver. And if we w did that, we considered this a moral victory. But uh, alas, it wasn't to be. <laughs> and that was the only game as well that the um, Ethereal died. Yes, the Ethereal um, died well, at the end of the game. Although if we'd have continued, the, he would have died. We had our one trike left, and he'd beaten up an entire blob squad of Imperial Guard on his own, which was pretty good. The Imperial Guard didn't have the power axes. Um, and then he was. Then he went in and he tried to get the relic back, uh, but then time was called, so they would have easily killed him on their next turn. Yeah, they probably would have shot him to pieces. They just did surround him. Um, although it would have been quite fun, him charging into another blob squad and trying to take him on. You're getting a lovely view as we're going to drive through Chelmsford here. No, so, we're not actually going through Chelmsford. Oh, where are we we're then? We're going to be going round, around Chelmsford. We're around going, Chelmsford, uh, just so you know where we're going. Yeah. So that was our third game, and we lost that. So overall, we got. A win, a draw, and a loss, um, and that put us seventh, which it is kind of like mid-table, which is where there, you expect was, to be. Yeah, there was 12 teams today, so yeah. we came seventh. Um, we did, however, the people we played against in our first game, uh, they came second. Yeah, they did. They were really pleased as well. I don't think yeah. they'd um, played in a huge amount of tournaments before, and they were really chuffed coming second, which was excellent, because yeah. they were really nice opponents to play, and that was our, our favourite game of the day, because it was so close, came down to the mm. last couple of rolls in the game. Well, it did come down to the last, yeah. Yeah, if we had killed one more turn. model, we could have lead shipped and lost the game. Yeah, um, and the people we played in the last game, they came third. So yeah, we had so drawn or won that one. We'd have, been, we'd have been up there, but yeah. alas, it wasn't to be that darn relic. Um, so who won the game? Um, I believe that Tony won the game, and I must apologise to the guy who Tony was playing with. I can't remember his name. Um, and what were they playing today? I think they were playing Eldar. Yeah, Tony had brought two Riptides, and I think they had Dark Eldar in there as well. Uh, yeah, the beautifully painted Dark Eldar, uh, and they built uh, Phil who was playing Blood Angels, and his friend was playing Eldar. They beat them in the final um, of the game, and I think it was a reasonably clear victory on their behalf, so well done to them. Um, but overall, another excellent day, wasn't it? We had yeah, a, it was a very really good time, free, free uh, enjoyable games. Plenty of money spent on your behalf. Yeah, well, <laughs> some of it was spent for Paul. I mean, it wasn't all mine. <laughs> And I, I only bought one Games Workshop thing today. I bought a brush. So yes, yeah, she's buying more stuff for uh, Drop Zone Commander, really. As yeah. Well, which, uh, which I'm, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, having, I'm trying to convince Nick to get it. They just brought out a new starter set, which is just incredibly cheap. So hopefully more people will be getting into the game because it's a, an excellent game to play. Uh, but back to the tournament today. What kind of what kind of other armies are there? There was quite a lot of Eldar there. Was a, there. there was a lot of Eldar and a lot of Tau really there today. Yeah, we um, saw there were lots of Riptides and lots of Wraith Knights scattered around on yeah. the tables all around about. Um, there wasn't many people, I think, with like che cheesy bits like there. Obviously, the Screamer Council is a bit of cheese, but the Screamer Council is pretty harsh. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but there wasn't. Re I, d I didn't really notice much of no. that. At all. I mean, the thing is, when you even a, a friendly local tournament, yeah. I mean. 
people are going to try and bring Lister to win. So well, yeah. Mark had bought his um, Screamers and it was well, a really no, good unit. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the list. It's a perfectly viable list. Yeah. It's, a really, it's really hard to uh, try and beat. Yeah, uh, and, that, and they lost the game, so it's perfectly well, yeah. beatable. It's, cause it's the random nature of the Grimoire. If you fail the Grimoire, then your unit is open to being hit. And if you don't go first, then you get a good chance of um, killing them as well. I'm trying to remember what other armies are about. There weren't many Space Marines about, but hopefully that will change with the new Codex out next month. Yeah, um, I didn't really see any Orcs. There wasn't really, I think it was mostly, I say, Tau, Imperial Guard, um, Eldar, Dark Eldar. I saw um, a couple of Chaos armies. There was one yep. which had uh, 18 obliterators in it. Oh, yeah. We, we lined up our opponents in the first game. Their second game was against an army that consisted of two Chaos Marines allied here, and they had, well, 18 obliterators. And I think we turned around after about 10 minutes of our game, and, and they'd killed 12 of the obliterators already. And uh, a Helldrake came on, um, for, and they in, intercepted it and killed it straight away. I think they had the tabled first. them within half an hour, that game. Yeah, it I've, was just incredible. Yeah, I think their one lasted, I think, three, three turns on that. Way, yeah, I think it, was. <laughs> it was just... It was ridiculous. They just blew them off the board. Uh, so back to our army. So what was your most valuable unit in our army, do you think, Nick, on your Tau side? Um, I, I, would, I would almost say the commander, really. I mean, with the Riptide, it's that whole that un, general unit. Um, yeah, I, I, really find, well. I find it hard to gauge because the Riptide and the commander were awesome because yeah. we were throwing out these Strength 8 ignores cover AP2 yeah. blasts and it was just, we basically chose a unit and killed a unit each turn. But we did spend a lot of points. Was that ability worth the kind of nearly 200 points we'd spent on a commander? Uh, quite possibly yeah, was. Quite, uh, I reckon quite possibly was. Because um, he also added hardness to the unit. I mean, we, we when we built the army, we'd kind of like plan for that the commander to go on various different things, hadn't we? Yeah, but he just generally stayed with that one unit. I mean, I think because we didn't face because we would have put him on the broad side if we faced things like a uh, wave serpents or rhinos and stuff like that but we really faced very few vehicles other than the AV-14s from the second game yeah but even they didn't prove too much of a problem because the bikes ended up going that's there. it and we were also going to stick it if we were floating into kind of like one wraith night we would have stuck in with the crew yeah. to help them kill it with their sniper rounds yeah um, I mean we uh, that was probably the most valuable I mean cause the broadsides in the first game the broadside we had one broadside that did quite well but um, everyone targeted our broadsides, didn't they? Yeah, they were they, first first target every game. They killed the broadsides because after our practice game, we were setting our broadsides up further forward, weren't we? Yeah, because obviously we realised after our practice game that we couldn't set them up too far away because of uh, range. Yeah, that was our yeah. issue there. From the yeah. Space Marine side, I think the Thunderfire Cannon. The Thunderfire Cannon did, did very well today. Which again, uh, it was just like. Every turn, you just wipe out a big wodge of troops. Especially that the set again the second against the game. Imperial Guard in the second game. Yeah, it was yeah, the, awesome. Yeah. Uh, oh, they were really unlucky. They tried killing it with their vendettas about yeah. three times and but, just couldn't shift it. Mm, I mean, the bikes only had the one well one really good game, which is the yeah. second one where they sort of went around and they just did everything they needed to. Do you mean our trike in that last game was awesome? It was, and uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, first game the Space Marines were just diabolical really the yeah the Space Marines did um, not do well in the first game their armour saves had deserted them overall worst unit of the day is the Terminators oh, so first game they fired their missile and I think did a couple of wounds and then they were wiped off to a man to normal non-AP2 shooting in the first game uh, yep you just, we just found all the uh, two, two plus saves second game they scattered off the board on deep strike and it was it wasn't that risky a deep strike. I think they scattered like 11 inches and went yeah, off the board. Yeah, uh, 10 inches they scattered and went off the board, but it was only by an, an inch, or so. inch or so. It wasn't by much. And then first ga third game, they charged the Screamers and got beaten up in one round. So all they did was give the Screamers a six-inch consolidate move. So that was really not worthwhile. So the Terminators were pretty bad. The Scouts weren't good. We found out while we were there, I think I mentioned earlier on, that you didn't need to bring two troops for each of your detachments, which seemed a little weird to me, but apparently it was in the rules pack. Um, so we could have happily not brought the scouts because they were they were useless. They were rubbish. Yeah, they um, they didn't. They, well, they finished off the wraith knight in the first. They game. did finish off, but because we were so tight on points, we couldn't afford the camo cloaks. We could, but we could have traded them in and brought a whirlwind, giving us some barrage yeah, and just a little more firepower. I think that would have been a much better a choice little bit for more our long, army. Long range firepower, I think, which yeah. would have been better. Um, yeah, like in the third game, I mean, we played quite badly there. We we infiltrated our scouts, but there was just nowhere we could put them, so we ended up sticking them off to the side. And they were the things that got killed yeah. for first blood. I felt uh, after I placed them there, we started. I was like, oh no, that's stupid. Why did I place them there? 
because I'd forgotten our enemy had rolled up the Ignore's Cover um, Psychic Power. I mean, playing against that many Psychers is quite difficult, trying to remember yeah. all the Psychic Powers they had. Um, I mean, the crew did quite well today. Um, <laughs> yeah, other than the Nurgling Apart from the Nurgling one, in, the, in, the la in that last game. No, I mean, was it? Uh, yeah, they were good in the first and the second game. Yeah, I mean, so. f first game they sort of come on and were harassing, like, Fire Warriors and that on that edge, weren't they? Yeah. No, they shot at the Dire Avenger unit. The first game. They, they did lots of stuff that game because then they yeah. came back and tried to score the objective and things, yeah. forcing them to fire at them. Um, and second game they came on and distracted the enemy again, basically. In the end. Yeah, so for a for a very quite. cheap point unit, I think they're really strong. Mm. I'm not sure on the snipers though, because we were we were using them to outflank most games, and because when you use the sniper rounds, the gun becomes heavy. We were using our rapid fire guns more than we thought. I mean, I suppose. But if we'd have set up normally and the Wraith Knights had have come at us, then yeah, it, we'd have used them yeah, there. Yeah, the we used the snipers were for particularly things like the Wraith Knights, so the big things as well generally, is because um, you wanted to roll the six for the rending, is basically what you wanted. Yes, yeah, because most of the time we were finding ourselves firing at troop choices that double the amount of shots was just better than the, um, the rending snipers, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so... Yeah. Our next tournament we're coming down to here in the, I think it's in November. Okay, Late November, there's a 2,000 point single person tournament. Uh, one day, and it'll probably be on a Sunday, I would imagine. I think it may be the 27th of November. No, I don't it's hold it's me. 24th. To that. 24th, quite possibly. Nick's got a better memory than me, so I'd trust him. It's so, if I'm any younger. Of you, oh, fairly. <laughs> so, if any of you are in the Colchester area at the end of November, you'll have a good time when you come down. We always do. And uh, thanks for watching the video, and wish us luck next time. Say bye, Nick. Bye.